Today I'm going to give you a, a couple of ideas of how you can use ChatGPT to help you uh, troubleshoot computer problems. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples uh, just to give you some ideas, but the more you use it as a tool for troubleshooting, the more you'll start to get ideas of how you can use it for the type of uh, technical troubleshooting that you need to do on a daily basis. All right, so the first thing, I'm going to do something really simple here. I'm going to uh, put in here, how do I uh, change screen resolutions on Windows 11? You probably already know how to do that, uh, but it's a good example just to see how it works. So once I put that in, it actually tells me where to find or how to get to the uh, settings. I'm going to do it real quick here where it says, it says press uh, Windows plus I. And it actually brings up uh, the dialog here, and here it is down in display, and it tells you where to go within this. So it actually can help you uh, find where a setting is, and this is is pretty important because, as you probably know, Windows sometimes moves around where the settings are on it, or, or you may be, need to troubleshoot an older version of Windows uh, where they have changed since changed where the location of uh, a settings panel is. So you can actually go into here and specify like in Windows 7, Windows 10, 11, whatever version that you have if you need to do this. So it's good for not only like finding out where the latest uh, location of a settings file is, but where you can find the settings in kind of a legacy software uh, or operating systems as well. So it's a, uh, it's a real good tool to help you, even if you know how to solve the problem, sometimes you don't know where a particular uh, th thing is and you spend a lot of time looking around for a configuration file or such. So another real quick demonstration here. We can ask it the question, uh, where does Microsoft uh, Word store document files by default? And so we can put that in and it will tell us what the default location is. And it actually even goes further to tell us how to change the default location. And uh, so, so let's say I, I go in there and, and, and it's not in the default location or one of the default locations it lists. Uh, I'm going to ask it, how can we uh, find the current default location of Word files? And, and it goes about telling us, you know, how we can find that in there as well. So, so we can specify things if, if it's not in the default location or if the question that we asked doesn't work, we can kind of clarify our, our question and continue on that as well. Uh, Another another example of this is say we're working on IIS uh, Internet Information System, the web server for Windows. We can go. Uh, what is the default directory that IIS is installed in? And it not only gives us the def default that it's under INET Pub, it gives us the the uh, key folders inside it and what they hold as well, like the log files. Uh, the HTML files and everything. And if it doesn't give us this for whatever reason, a lot of times it elaborates a little more than we ask, which is nice. If it doesn't, you can always get more specific with your question or go or ask it, what are the other directories within uh, this directory? What do they do? So you can ask it any uh, question uh, like that as well. So let's go with something a little more complex. So let's say we uh, can't connect to the internet. My computer is not connecting to the internet. How can I fix it? So let's ask it that. And the great thing about this is it will actually give you step-by-step -step details of how to do this. And that's very useful because you can also specifically say, give me step-by-step -step instructions for how to do something. So say you watch a video on YouTube uh, and it, it takes you through a bunch of uh, steps to do something. And then you're trying to do that particular thing, but you're having problems re uh, remembering all the steps that you need to take. One thing you can do is use this in conjunction with YouTube videos and other sources that help you 
to troubleshoot and say, oh, just give me a list of this. So you watch the video so you get a good idea of what's going on. And then you can actually tell it to give you a set of instructions so that as you're stepping through it, uh, you have a list without having to go down and write the entire list of things. Usually, uh, for me, uh, watching a video or reading a set of instructions, I get the gist of how to do it, but there's always like one or two things in there, and you want to know a specific, like the location of uh, where a setting is or a file is or something. We can do something like this. Uh, where is the configuration file for Apache located? Apache is... Uh, a uh, open source of web server that you might want to uh, install on a server or something. And so uh, if we do that, it will actually tell us what the, the main uh, files are, where they're located in various operating systems, and it will go on. And you can ask things specifically. So one thing I might have done was say, well, where are the, where's the default locations of the Apache files in Linux or in Windows? So I can specify the operating system and such. But it gives you all these details. And the nice thing is, when it gives you these details, you can go back and go, um, can you elaborate more on step four or on this part of the uh, uh, answer? All right, to take this example a little bit further, say I want to install Apache on, on Windows. Uh, I, can, I can Google the instructions for setup on things. But a lot of times, ChatGPT gives you a set of instructions uh, that are easier to kind of follow. You might need to go th through another set of more detailed instructions somewhere, but it, it generally gives you all the steps that you need to uh, go through, and it will mention different resources in its descriptions a lot of times, which will help you um, to start out. Or if, you're, if you've been installing Apache and you haven't done it in a while and you just want a quick reminder, it's good for doing that. Uh, Google now also has a thing where it will summarize when you ask a question, it will summarize an AI at the top. A lot of times, if it's a technical problem, um, uh, it will summarize the steps to fix it. But the nice thing about ChatGPT is you can ask it further questions or ask it to elaborate on things you don't understand. So I'm going to ask it to give me a, a, a set of step-by-step -step instructions to uh, set up Apache, I'm telling it on Windows, one thing you want to do is, like, if you want a set of instructions of how to install something, you want to tell it what operating system or the specifics that are important to those instructions. Otherwise, it may give you the, the wrong set of instructions, or it may go ahead and go through how to install it on multiple operating systems. And it goes in here how to configure it, how to add paths to it. How do you even uh, allow Apache through the firewall and such? So it goes through a lot of stuff. And like, for instance, down here on firewall, uh, depending on your firewall, you might need to go into that and go, well, specifically I have, uh, you know, maybe a Cisco firewall on the network. Or, or maybe you need to uh, just know how to set the configuration of the firewall all locally on Windows, uh, which this is actually telling you how to do the one, uh, set it on Windows itself, but it doesn't tell you how to do the external firewall that you might have on your network. And so you can ask that as a specific question too. And then as a final, th as a final thing, here's a question you can ask, or you can ask similar questions. Give me some examples of questions I can ask ChatGPT to troubleshoot computers. And so we can put that in, and it will give us a, all, a, a really great list of different types of things with general troubleshooting, network issue questions you can ask, software issue questions you can ask. So even if you don't know what question to ask exactly, you can ask it to suggest questions you could ask for a particular thing or uh, to give you a list of things, that, the most common problems. Or uh, in this case, we could have specified a particular um piece of software even. So we might say, uh, what are some of the main problems with Microsoft Word that I might ask questions about as far as troubleshooting it? Uh, anything specific to your particular uh, uh, problem that you're trying to troubleshoot at the time. Uh, so those are some things that you can actually do with ChatGPT to kind of help you find certain things or troubleshoot certain things. Uh, it's really useful on things like a lot of times when I'm looking to configure something or fix a problem, 
I need to know where the configuration file is or I need to know where a data file is and it may not be totally obvious where that is and uh, some programs it's harder to find than others and ChatGPT seems to in general do a good job of telling you exactly where that that file may be located and giving you alternatives even a lot of times if you google that uh, problem and just look for the responses from uh, google and look at the websites you'll find a lot of pages with in, in, instructions uh, where the configuration file might be or the particular file or directory that you're looking for but sometimes it doesn't give you the exact thing sometimes you have to go through an entire document to find it and uh, sometimes it's really difficult to find but ChatGPT will give you an answer more directly a lot of times